So how many people have like made 360 content in their past? How many people haven't done it at all? Okay, cool. Um, so, a little bit of history. My name is Tom Connors, I work for The Verge. Uh, I do video there. Uh, and actually it was here at CES uh, that we got the call that, hey, you have the opportunity to be at the White House uh, to interview the First Lady. How do you want to do it? Like, what's the what's the idea of how you, how you want to like get in there and make that something special? And a big topic of uh, CES was a lot of 360 video, a lot of VR. So that was our initial like learn out. Like, oh, let's shoot in 360, having no experience and no idea what that meant or what the production of doing that was, which was a dumb thing to do. I don't recommend doing it. But uh, we learned a lot. And I think it turned out really well. Um, did, I, did everyone get a chance to see the video? Is it, no one has seen it? Okay, cool. So we'll play a couple moments from that and like talk about it a little bit. Um, so I'm, I'm with The Verge. Uh, we did the, the filming. We did. Uh, we partnered with John and Total Cinema 360. They helped us uh, bring in some cameras and work on that. But uh, we actually had to partner with uh, Lunar North and Marcus. Is, uh, yeah, I'm Marcus. I'm creative director and partner with Lunar North. Um, All right. So we're we're based out of Detroit, and uh, yeah, Tom reached out to us. We got an email that basically said, "How would you like to make a video for the first lady?" And how do you say no to that? And they're like, "Okay, and it's 360, and it's VR." Like, okay, we have a lot to figure out here. Yeah. So uh, it was both of our first times doing it, and the thing I want to stress the most is like, it wasn't that hard. It really wasn't. And if you haven't done it yet, try like. There are tons of easy ways into it. Um, that being said, we did not do the stitching. Uh, all the stitching was handled for us. I think that's pretty complicated to understand. So, plan uh, accordingly. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're just gonna start on, um, what I think we wanna talk about is sort of what the challenges we faced when we had an interview to deal with. So yeah, so, uh, this is sort of a, a title card we have of like, yes, and this kind of represents the idea of like, bringing in some 2D elements to a 360 shoot. I think we're going to talk a little bit about um, Yeah, move on. Uh, okay, so we got this idea of having to shoot an interview in 360, and we hit like a couple initial like big problems we have. One, there's lack of visuals. Like, sure, we're in the White House, and that's like really exciting and new, but you're still in a static room with not a lot changing. It's not exactly like you're hang gliding off of a, a mountain where you're like in the cockpit with uh, the blade, right? It's not a very dynamic scene that's going to change. So how do we make a full 10 minute interview interesting and something that you can watch? Um, and then the second thing is uh, connection, right? Like there's something about 360 video that still puts you at a distance from a person. You can feel like you're in the room with those people, but there's still right now, we, I feel like we have that, that problem of being maybe five feet away from someone. And while you're in the room with them, you're still pretty much at a good distance from them. And it's hard to connect, right? And like an interview is all about connection. And here we have this chance to see and be in the same room with the First Lady, but to make you connect with her was a big challenge we were initially figuring out. Um, and then this last one I touched on already was inexperience. None of us had ever done anything with 360 before. We're all big like VR nerds and like really excited for the idea of it, but actual production, zero. So, you know. It's a lot of eggs to put in one 360 basket of bringing a camera there to the White House, setting it down, and walking away hoping we get it. Like, I, needless to say, I don't think a lot of us would have jobs if we left without a video of her. Um, so yeah, that's the one. Um, so uh, we had two major solutions. One, uh, which Mark is going to talk about, is we knew we wanted to use graphics. We knew we wanted to use graphics to help bring those visuals in, help accentuate what she's talking about, and help connect that. There we go. Uh, and help connect everything to bring, bring the viewer into it a little bit better. And graphics were a big part of that. Uh, but the one solution that we also decided to do was we wanted to shoot a traditional 2D video along with it. Um, so this is my really crappy uh, shot plot for this. But the idea was like it wasn't just these three subjects, but we had an entire set around it, right? And this like brings in that whole 360 element of having something interesting going around. Um, one of the shots we used was a five foot slider. Um, and the shot, I think, gets used once. And it was because my editor felt bad that I was on a slider for 20 minutes and not ever used the shot. So she snuck it in there at one point, And I, I don't think it's actually useful. But the whole time, you get to actually experience me. Do you mind popping up to YouTube? 
Um, so yeah, this is our this is our, our video. Uh, the other shot we had was uh, Total Cinema actually filmed the photo shoot that we have with the First Lady as well, and that was sort of our introduction to this. And then we had our, our first draft. Can you push through there? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, sure. We got it. Okay. Nope. Hello? 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 All right, there we go. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so, you might have a working off the uh, phone, so, very well. But, uh, so anyways, we, we put this whole, uh, you know, traditional 2D set around, and it's funny, one of our editors has a lot of friends in the uh, academic field for VR, and she had asked them what they thought about it, and they were like, well, you know, it doesn't really feel like you actually use 360. It feels like you were really afraid to use it, because you didn't embrace it, like you still shot in 2D, um, which I think is a really interesting point that I actually really am interested in debating, but... Uh, what I think it really helped us with is it helped address a lot of the issues that we had. Uh, do you mind going back to those uh, slides for a second while that works? Uh, so yeah, so how did, how did that help us? So the lack of visuals, one, like, uh, it would have been really easy for us to still shoot in 2D and then uh, remove our entire, like we could have shot a plate of everyone in the room and removed it in post and you never have known that 2D should happen. But, like I said before, having that entire set gave someone something to look at when they looked around, right? I think in 360, you want to, not necessarily, you want to focus people on what they want to look at, but you want to at least reward them for having the, you know, courage to kind of look around and, and do stuff, right? So that was a big reason to come back. Um, the slider. Uh, back to the connection, right? right? So we got those that, those close-up shots in. Um, you want to go to that quick? I'm going to get good. So, like, in this instance, right, we're, we're using our tight shot from our traditional interview setup, and uh, while graphics are happening behind us, and while we have it kind of blurred out in the background, which is also how we're hiding cuts, right? You have a 20 minute interview and you cut it down to 10 minutes, like, you have a lot of cutting happening, and like, hiding that in 360 in a good way is difficult to say the least. But um, being able to incorporate videos was something that you would want to do because this whole piece is about social media and how the first lady uses that. So, having the these kind of like phone placeholders is a big kind of breakthrough moment for us where we could figure out, oh, this is how we're going to show a lot of other content other than the one through 60 shots that we have. Um, all right, so yeah, back to that. And then uh, also, uh, go back to inter uh, our inexperience, it was a huge fail safe for us because at the very end of the day, we knew we would leave with at least, uh, you know, a regular traditional interview with the First Lady and not have to rely on you know, two experimental cameras in a lot of ways. Uh, we uh, we actually partnered with John and told us in the 360, and it was tight. There was a, there was a couple errors with the one camera, and it was uh, kind of down to the wire on if it was going to work. And we did it, so I can't stress again like have backups still. Like it's still emerging technology. We're still not sure we can use it. Um, but now I want to get into more of uh, what Marcus and his team like beautifully executed for us which is this idea of graphics and wiping to a whole other world to keep this interesting throughout. So here you go, Marcus. So yeah, designing in 360. I come from a traditional graphic design background, so it's kind of found my way into motion graphics. So this was an exciting, uh, designing in 360 was an exciting challenge for me. So. Like any project, it was great because with Metal Studio and Skybox, we really were able to just work the way we always do. Like we did not have to change anything in our production process. So we started just like we always would go slide with storyboarding. And this was, this was kind of fun. The challenges with this came more from not in the design of it, but actually figuring out how do we do it beyond. So we started off, you can see, very simple. We start right in the center, so we focus on that. We started to introduce these elements that branch out and move around. Back to the center, and have a nice calm moment, and then explode out in the 360 full around so you can get the opportunity to look. And now you've essentially given your viewer a tutorial on how to do this stuff, like you would a video game. So they know they know things to move around, they know to go 360, and then that was just kind of figuring out some of the visuals we'd use. Not everything we decided to use made it in there, like uh, 
in this fun frame here. We thought it would be great to have Michelle Obama and be our headset drop on her and to deal with it thing, given the whole social media subject. But so this was yeah, this was really our process, just like you would any other any other projects. We can go scroll through these real quick. So just starting very career pen and paper. Just sort of thinking about how we would handle these challenges, figuring out pace and all that. Yeah, so you can see how a lot of that's starting to translate in there. And we can go ahead and uh, talk about the kind of style there. So, so it was great. Uh, the Verge had a pretty good idea of how they wanted the web element of this to go and the overall presentation of it. So we kind of had a system to start with. So we just we had a good, a good jumping off point of what our vision should be, kind of where our color palette should go, font choices, things like that. And even just like you can see the pairing of the imagery and the, and the type and everything, it's, it's sophisticated, but it's played out. So we had to figure out how do we translate that imagery. So these are some of our, our early attempts here. Um, in the top left there, you can see us kind of trying to figure out how we're going to get these containers for different, like Michelle Obama's tweets, different vines, things like that. And then just sort of how to like place elements on the page, on the, on the screen, how it worked out. Um, and what we found pretty quickly with this is that everything felt huge. As soon as we dropped it in, like we would just upload these to YouTube and just grab the Google Cardboard. That's how we did a lot of our photos making. This is all no sophisticated VR stuff, no Oculus or anything. But we found that things were moving way too fast. Things were way too big, so they felt like they were right in your face. So in the big, huge, solid color fields, we were just overwhelmed. So we're going to the next stage. You can sort of see where we started to find some refinements. And we really started establishing a visual language that was something that we had, we had a lot of content. We had something that happened for the motion graphics to do. So we had to figure out how to create something that was reusable but not too repetitive. So we came up with a lot of these circles and lines that would sort of lead the viewer around and act as directional devices sometimes. And then integrating footage, that really helped a lot. That was a big breakthrough, I thought, for us. So you can see, like we really we designed everything for that. It was all it was all essentially 2D. And we, uh, it's just amazing to see if you jump back to the video, Tom, some of the sections. But we really didn't have to do a whole lot. Like, so this is there are areas if you want, you know, things to feel like they're on a certain plane in 3D space. Uh, Skybox is awesome. It's, aspects of it that can help you integrate, yeah, just like this stuff here, so it feels more like it's on a plane and less in the ground, but overall I think we really felt like we liked the roundness of everything. And then, uh, you can jump back to the PDF list. This is just, I, we thought this was really fun, just kind of seeing, like, what is essentially happening with your graphics. Like, Skybox just did all this for you. We didn't have to think about how to do this at all. It just we clicked a couple buttons and it happened. We could just stick to what we knew and be good, you know, 2D motion designers. Focus on that side of things. And then there was a little bit of it incorporating some Cinema 4D stuff, but they have really nice uh, you know, like rectangular outputs for Cinema now. So that was a piece of cake. There's a shower of tire that rolls around the whole screen. It was just a quick little 3D output. But yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, and then there was a lot of fun stuff just sort of figuring out some of these devices, like how to lead your eye around, you know, just, just bouncing back and forth. So you follow the circle, and you know exactly where to go, and you're not you know, talking down to your audience with an arrow pointing at them, saying, you have to look this way, go over here. It's, you find a fun way to incorporate the graphic in the twisting in the direction. Is there a design layout all flat? Like More or less, yes. Yeah. Yes, if uh, our design was all flat on a 2D canvas, essentially. A lot of it was designing things in Illustrator, bringing it into After Effects. And there was actually a lot of designing straight in After Effects because, given the timeline, I think we had three weeks from start to finish to storyboard and execute this whole thing, so we had to make sure we were building things for animation. You don't ever have to think in the version, like, create them and pose and then when it's yeah, well, that was what I was saying. It was great because there were there were a few moments where we did want to do that. So it, it, the tools that Metal has, but they, they do the distortion for you. You place it in there, and it shows up as a flat to the image. It's, it's a piece of cake. 
Any other questions?